in regards to coaching, how it started was it was just after lockdown and I'd come back from playing in Slovenia and I was literally, I was just at home, wasn't really doing much. And then I, I then was training throughout lockdown, trying to keep myself fit. Then I went on trial at Crawley Town and I was there for like, it was meant to be a week trial. I was there for two days. Mm -hmm. I tore the muscle in my quad. And oof. yeah, oof. and I was out for a very long time. And I was like, you know what? Let me start just coaching. Let me just start giving back, doing something to literally just, I felt like I had a lot of knowledge in it. So I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? Let me give back. Let me give back. And yeah, I just, it, I, I remember being a scholar at South End. And when I was doing my um, level two, the guy was like to me, do you know what? You'd be a great coach if you didn't want to play football. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, but yeah, that was it. After lockdown, I literally just went into coaching. Mm -hmm. And I guess, yeah, I just went to coaching. Literally, because I, I couldn't have played football at the time, Yeah, I just started to coach and coach. Mm -hmm. And then from that, it just it grew but it just became what signature is mm -hmm. so how how did you start what did you start off doing one-on-ones or small so groups? it started off in like small groups mm -hmm. and then within those small groups where i've played football and my standards i pay a lot of like attention to detail on like little things i'm i'm, I'm like very picky like parents could say i nitpick about little mm -hmm. things but within those group settings, I would like identify a child and I'd be like, okay, I know you're doing your step over like this and I'm not saying this wrong, but I want you to go like this and then exit there and mm -hmm. do this and then do it like that. And from that bigger scale, I then started to focus on private training for the children that wanted to be pushed and the children that players that wanted to progress mm -hmm. and yeah, that's literally just how it started just I guess attention to detail really on like little things mm -hmm. so tell us a bit about signature ballers so what do you guys specialize in <laughs> so signature ballers what do we specialize in we specialize in making players the best version of themselves mm -hmm. and working in small groups and one-to-one -one settings with the best playing against the best because you know iron sharpens iron you're like there's i wouldn't put a kid in hair end in the same group as a kid that is just playing grassroots football because the gap is too big he wouldn't yeah. get anything from it he doesn't get anything from it yeah. so putting level-headed and like similar level players together Mm -hmm. and using what I know about football, what they've learned, speaking to clubs and it's like what good relationship with clubs now. Mm -hmm. What that club's looking for, what he's looking for, and putting those players that need to improve their dribbling with the players that need to improve their defending, mm -hmm. and just literally sharpening up everyone in every way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. So when when you started your business, what was some some challenges or obstacles you faced at the beginning stages? So there were there's been two things that have been like quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Um I'm really about quality. Like when I first started Signature, it was really about quality. And the obstacle that I've found is trying to scale it up mm -hmm. without losing that quality and without losing the identity that signature is, which is mm -hmm. not not to say that we don't have children in that aren't necessarily at a top category one club, because that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But at the start of it, it was hard to, in a way, turn away business and turn away clients because I was like, hey, I'm trying to keep it of this caliber and of this ilk yeah. and then push on from it. Yeah. There is a place for everyone, but at the beginning, it was really just 
narrowed in on elite level. And not yeah. only elite level footballers, but parents that were willing to buy into the program. Parents yeah. that were willing to give me the time to implement what I know on, on the child mm-hmm. and the footballer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that that was a big obstacle because there's been a lot of times where people have come and mm-hmm. the things that I've taught them isn't necessarily isn't social media or like it isn't Instagrammable, it isn't your kid doing 15 turns. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to build a footballer at the end of the day. So yeah. I'm working on ball striking, fundamentals, working mm-hmm. on different types of turns, working on back to things that other coaches wouldn't necessarily touch on because it's boring to do it with a child that's six years old. Hey, mm-hmm. you've got to work on both foot receiving. We're, we're doing yeah. 20 minutes of ball striking today. It's boring. Yeah. And some of the parents, they didn't necessarily agree with that, which is fair because I'm, I'm not always right. But but that was a big obstacle. And my second one is when it comes to football, I am brutally honest about everything. Where your child is at, mm-hmm. where I feel like they're lacking on the football pitch, where I feel like there's places they could improve, what level mm-hmm. I see them at. And mm-hmm. the obstacle has been, I don't know how to word it. It's been, while being so honest, mm-hmm not upsetting a client because yeah. there's been a, a lot of times and in the football business, there's a lot of people and business in general and life in general, there's a lot of people that will lie to push their engender and to help themselves out. Correct. I'm not one of them. I, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't need to, I don't need to lie to a parent to keep a child. I don't need to say your son's going to play for Arsenal knowing that it's nowhere near the standard. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of, people and coaches that will do those things just to keep the client happy tell them what they hear mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. a big obstacle for me has been I guess staying true to myself in terms of that because yeah. I've had instances where parents have come to me XYZ coach is ready for hair and I'm like no he's not mm-hmm. that is the standard not saying he cannot get there but as of current he can. He is not at the level it will take. I'd say six months of pure training, but then you have mm-hmm. to also that those kids are training. So where is he really at? Yeah. And for some parents, they love it because they're like, Do you know what? When I go to Amani, I'm gonna get the brutal, honest feedback, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's in the middle. Mm-hmm. And other parents, when they hear what I've got to say, yeah. What, saying I'm always right I'm just giving my opinion because football is just a game of opinions anyway I think yeah. the kid's okay and another kid thinks the kid is amazing mm-hmm. when my opinion mm-hmm. is some of them like shied away and like come back away from me and signature which I, I don't I don't have any problems with but that has been a big obstacle trying to mm-hmm. be honest and keep people happy they don't really go hand in hand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that because you, so from from what you're saying, you have your your kind of niche very narrowed down, and you know I speak to a lot of coaches, and a lot of coaches they say what you're saying, but they don't follow up on what they what what they're saying. So they they would rather bring in someone for for the extra fifty pound fifty dollars, uh, and then they just become an absolute nightmare headache to work with. Um, so from what you're saying, you've had to turn away some players in, in the past, right? Yeah. So I I, I always tr- try to give a fair chance to the child because when you're going into an environment where children have been training for six months and you're the new kid. Yeah. I remember when I went on trial at Arsenal, I, I know how it feels to be the trialist. So mm-hmm. I'd give them a week trial, two weeks, see how they do. Mm-hmm. But there's children I've had to say to the parent, hey, I don't think that is ready. Even though it hasn't benefited me, I'm like, I don't think that is ready. Mm-hmm. I can recommend X, Y, Z. I've recommended people to other places. I'm like, for the standard that we are right now, he's not ready. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's it's a good thing that I, I keep it like that because when people come to me and they speak to me, they know what they're getting. There's no sugar coating. There's no, I'm just, this is how it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So how many members do you currently have at your at your business, your, your academy? 
So the I coach or on just the books? Just in the, well, yeah, under signature ballers. Under signature ballers, I'd say we have around like 130 children-ish. Awesome, awesome. So how, how did you get to that level to have that many that many clients in your business? Um, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been, for the first year, I've been just so focused on quality, giving mm -hmm. great sessions, keeping standards high, yeah. not letting children that are going to bring the level down, keeping the standards high. Mm -hmm. Because I've put that out there and the attention to detail that I do go and give the children that I'm coaching, when they are in their places, so at Arsenal Development Centre or mm -hmm. Hale End or Coburn or Spurs, mm -hmm. when these children... That my children are kind of like my marketing tool because mm -hmm. when they go into these places and they smash it, mm -hmm. everyone says, who is training your child? Yeah. And it's a Marnie signature. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that is you keep like-minded parents, yeah. like-minded children in and around the club. Yeah. So... I wouldn't necessarily say that signature is for someone that just wants a casual kick around. The, the sessions are going to be intense. Mm -hmm. We want the player to develop on and off the pitch. We want them yeah. to be in the environment where it's tough, but they're learning. And when people all come for a similar reason, because they don't all come for the same reason, come for a similar reason, mm -hmm. It just tends to grow and grow and it's been steady and controllable, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But just the word of mouth and the children like applying what they've learned is mm -hmm. that it has grown to that okay. number, really. Awesome. So tell us a bit about the structure of your business, because I know you guys you guys play matches against yes. other teams and stuff. So how, how is your business structured? Is it just purely training? Are you guys set up more or less a club? Because a lot of coaches ask me, how can I turn my training business into, well, how can I implement teams into, but still keeping the training aspect as the number one priority? So we are a training club. Mm -hmm. And because I used to play football and um, schoolboy at Arsenal, scholar at South End, professional Slovenia and I've kind of kept good contacts and good links with those people that set me up yeah and um, because of that what I'm now in a position to do is we train we'll train together and then the boys that are ready I'll to make a phone call I'll be like hi XYZ from Spurs I've got a group of under sevens ready just let me know if when you're ready to take a look. And then we'll go in there, we'll play against mm -hmm. whatever Spurs have in there, and then they'll take a play or two. And mm -hmm. with all like the rest of like the London clubs. Okay. Um, but yeah, we we, we specialise in training. We don't have a grassroots team, so like a Sunday team that plays consistent matches. Mm -hmm. But due to my relationships with A other academies, B professional football clubs. Yeah. We set up regular friendlies, regular matches against them. Um, we also play in external tournaments mm -hmm. with like, other clubs and other academies like around around England. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, okay, cool. So tell us a little bit as well how how you have kind of your membership structure. So, so in, in terms of like, do parents pay monthly? Is are games included in that membership? So. Parents pay monthly. It's a mm -hmm. it's a monthly subscription, mm -hmm. which for I think for parents' sake, for my sake, it's just so much easier, so much cleaner. It's just yeah. hey, every month you know you're getting X amount of sessions in X location, and then that's done. Matches are not included. Um, mm -hmm. 
it's a weird one. I don't, it's it's a bad business structure, but mm. I don't charge parents to play matches okay. through signature. Um, I feel like because I use it as a, it's kind of like their performance stage. Mm-hmm. Work so hard here. I want to give you now the platform to show me, can you apply what you've learned? Yeah. And growing up how I grew up, I don't think it's just to charge them for it. Mm-hmm. Some people do. I don't I don't disagree. Like it's whatever mm-hmm. your structure is. But yeah, we don't I don't I don't charge you for match play. It's just a monthly subscription. And then the one to one basis, that is so parents will book in with the admin on mm-hmm. a on a monthly basis. So okay, so you want X time for X amount of so you want a Monday at five o'clock mm-hmm. for a month. And then after that like on the third week we'll be like hey would you like to renew said yeah time? if they're like no then okay thank you very much if they're like yeah and just keep renewing it like that and that's how we okay. do it with the one-to-one basis okay so the the team aspect or the matches friendlies that's kind of your, your unique selling point right yeah okay and that's how you kind of add more value to your program yeah because these children know and the parents Sorry, not mm-hmm. children. The players and the parents know that after we train for X amount of time, yeah. And if we are hitting the levels that we need to, yeah, we will then be put into the environment to show it to yeah. a professional club. Yeah. And that's the beauty in it, is that they know it's coming. Mm-hmm. They they know there's they're gonna be in the environment where they can shine in the shop window. Mm-hmm. because it's what we do at Signature. Yeah. You train hard, you put the hours in, we will give you the opportunity to go and show your capabilities to other people, to the professional clubs. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Perfect. Like that. So where, where do you see the, the private training industry going in the next two to five years? I see it flourishing, man. Yeah. Because... In as I've started to do private sessions more, and mm-hmm. how I initially started was private sessions. If you've got a player that wants to learn, yeah, and a parent that wants to be engaged and be patient with the process of learning, and you've got a coach giving good information and good knowledge, you have a child that will have accelerated learning because mm-hmm. it's, it is football and repetition. If you're in a massive group of a hundred kids and there's a ball each and we're doing a shooting draw, for example, and you're in a queue of 50 children, you're probably going to have three shots in, yeah. in, in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Whereas if it's a private session that has been tailored for, Hey, we're working on your shooting today. Mm-hmm. You could have a hundred shots in yeah. the, the same amount of time. And the confidence and repetition, that all comes from practice. Yeah. Being in the environment where you know what you're going to do comes from practicing hours and hours and hours. So Mm -hmm. I think as more people realize that, I say people, parents, if your child wants to learn and is willing to engage, on the practice and the programs that the coaches have set up, they will see that there's accelerated learning. Mm -hmm. And also on a bigger scale, when I think about academy level football, if all children go in three times a week, do the same things three times a week, you leave A, a lot down to natural ability, Mm -hmm. and B, slightly down to luck. Whereas Mm -hmm. the child, the child that goes to that club three times a week, mm-hmm. gets his reports back, says these are areas to improve and areas to um, that are good, and mm-hmm. has his coach on the side, and they're working on those areas that are weaknesses, yeah. like boosts and strengths, that is mm-hmm. a child that will eventually stand out and shine. Yeah. Because 
out, everyone's in the same mold. You're doing something else that's helping you grow. You mm-hmm. work in growth. It's, it's uh, for me personally, it just makes so much common sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, with private coaching was more of a thing when I was a yeah footballer. Yeah, because yeah. I think about the information that I'm able to give the the players now. Yeah. If I knew the information at the ages that they knew now, that I'm passing to them at like seven, eight, or I coach older boys, 14, mm-hmm. 16. Yeah. The information that they're receiving now is information that I received as a professional. All right. So we now have a younger generation of children with the mindset and understanding of football at a higher level. Yeah. And as that gets better, I think the private coaching is just going to get better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I completely agree. I mean, I was having this conversation with a coach, I think it was last week, and I was saying to him that like, when, when I was younger, private training was seen as something that only the weaker players got because he was like, oh, you need it in order to catch up. Yes. But now it's a case of even, even the best players on the team are doing it. Because they know that's that's their kind of advantage over their teammates. Hundred percent. The the amount of children in Cobham, Helen, Spurs, Mottsburg Park that have private coaches it is in it's actually to the point where if you don't have a private coach, you're actually missing out and you're falling behind because those mm. children are away from the club working it's mm-hmm. it's actually it's insane it's actually mm-hmm. insane mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so for for any uk coach watching yeah right, what's what's a couple of ways that you can add value to your program so you've obviously mentioned uh, teams like showcase matches so what's a, another couple of things that you guys do in order to separate yourself from from everyone else um we are very we're very picky in terms of the children that we let in. Mm-hmm. This isn't me saying if a child isn't of the certain level that is not allowed in signature. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying for the levels that the children are, I'll put them in a like-minded session. So mm-hmm. if there is a, a child that is technically weak or physically weaker, I will recommend them to that class and signature, whereas I feel like that is well that where they will benefit. Even if that child, that player or parent wants to go to a, the session where all of the kids from Hale End are, I'll say no. Mm-hmm. I'll say even though it would benefit me more because it's another another lesson, more money, I say no. Mm-hmm. Quality over quantity. I'd rather have eight children in there and eight children in there than 16 children five times a week. Because mm-hmm. then the quality that you're putting out there lessens. Mm-hmm. Not not the quality of the children, the quality of your session. If you're training at one pace at Hale End, and I'm saying, okay, off you go. Let's go Zidane into a step push, drop your shoulder, and then accelerate away. Mm-hmm. And that's the speed they're training at. Whereas yeah. another session, I'm like, okay. Now we're going to work on the Zidane. This is how we do the Zidane. We step here, we push there. He oh. doesn't get anything from it. Yeah. And then this this player, he doesn't get anything from being at that pace because he just drowned. Yeah. So I guess we are very selective about who we let in where. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that is one thing that Signature, we pride ourselves on. Mm-hmm. Quality over quantity. Keeping the standards and the players as high as possible, mm-hmm. because otherwise, I just feel like it waters stuff down. It just it just doesn't have the same feeling, effect, energy. When I can have a kid that is on the verge of getting a contract offer at Arsenal, mm-hmm. with a kid that's just started playing football. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yes. Okay. Okay. So for, for those watching that aren't in the UK, what is Halen? Hey because you've obviously mentioned it a few times. Yes. You're not probably watching, um, thinking, what's that? Yes, sorry, sorry. For those that aren't in the UK, so the way the, the 
the English academy system works is before the age of seven, so before an under seven, you have to stay in development centres. And it's where it's kind of like open football. If you have a bit of ability, you can go to a development centre and Arsenal have them, Chelsea have them, Fulham have them. Mm-hmm. And you just go in there and they're spread out across London. Mm-hmm. And from that, from all of the centres, coaches will go around and they will handpick, I'd say, two or three from each centre or each site mm-hmm. and then put them into one place to train. And that one place is Hairland where Saka trained, I train, mm-hmm. all of the Arsenal Academy, official Academy products will train at Hairland. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that is what Hairland is. Hairland is the official Academy place of training for Arsenal. The the same equivalent is Cobham for Chelsea mm. yeah. and Watspur Park for Fulham. Yeah. And for Spurs, Tottenham Hotspurs, they just have mm. a under seven elite group at Tottenham's training ground where the first team train. Perfect. Thanks for uh, cl- clarifying that. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. No worries. Excellent, am I? So last question, where do you see your business in the next five years from now? Um How do you envision it? How, okay, I've, I've I've made notes on this. <laughs> How I see Signature in the next five years is I want it to be the place that when you want to bridge your gap, whatever that gap is to the player, this is where you come. Um. I want in the next five years, I want to be pushing more children into professional clubs than I am now. I I want the standard of the children to be better because we've coached them for longer. I want the standard of quality of sessions just get better and better because, because I'm just improving and we are just improving as coaches because I've got an unbelievable coaching team with me. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want more children thriving in professional clubs and pushing the door to get into professional clubs. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, I want players, whatever their level is, to be the best that they can be in that level. Mm -hmm. Because not everyone has the opportunity to go and play at Arsenal Academy. But they will play in their grassroots team and I want them to be the best in that environment. Mm -hmm. They might not play professional football here, but they might play college, play um, football, soccer in America, in the States, yeah. or at university. And I want them to have the fundamentals that they've learned from such a young age to help them push on and be the best that they can be. And on a non-football aspect, I've, I've set up a charity, mm-hmm. uh, Signature Foundations, and in the next five years, I, I want Signature to touch more people. Mm-hmm. I want us to be giving back more to, to just be better people at the end of the day. Because mm-hmm. it's football, but it's also character building. It's mm-hmm. also setting good examples for the children. Yeah. To be good footballers on the pitch, but be a lovely person off the pitch. Mm-hmm. I want Signature to really preach that and show what football is, what a footballer is. Mm-hmm. On the pitch, we are amazing. We're relentless. Mm-hmm. Off the pitch, we're loving. We're kind. Mm-hmm. We, we want to push things that are bigger than football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next five years, I, I'm, I'm going to say I hope, well, I'll, I'll, I'd love it to be just everywhere different mm-hmm. countries mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, going to different countries to play tournaments good exposure for the footballers good experience for the children that they remember for life mm-hmm. yeah I, I just want it to be wherever it's going to be I want yeah to be awesome like that so for, for any coach that that wants to follow uh what you're doing follow you or even get in contact with you what's what's the best ways to do that 
uh, to get in contact with me, I would just say, say like, um, my, my social media page, I guess, really, yeah. which is just Signature Ballers. Um, and then from there, I've got my own personal Instagram that people can like feel free to message and contact me through there. Oh. And for anyone that wants to go on and start something, because Signature is still so early, still very young, it's only, mm-hmm. it's only one year old. Um, mm-hmm. But I would say, be true to yourself and mm-hmm. your core values and your morals. Mm-hmm. And keep your standards, not just in terms of the footballer that comes in, but also yourself. Keep your standards as high as they can be and yeah. trust yourself. Don't look at anyone else doing this and doing that. Mm-hmm. If you trust your vision, just stick with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Love that. Awesome. All right, Marnie. Well, thanks for jumping on. Pleasure learning from you. And um, look forward to, to catching up again very soon. Okay, thank you so much. Take care.